So we have most of our parts set up now. The only thing that we need to do is add the data that comes here, add a scroll view and give last finishing touches. So let's begin by adding the data here. So we'll come down here. The first thing that we'll do is we'll remove this band responder from this animated header height view and move it to the outside view, which is the absolutely position view. What that does is that gives us access to the pan responder in the whole view. Otherwise it is only available on the top half. So inside the view that has the pan responder on it, we'll put in another view, which would be the bottom half once this is expanded. So we'll say animated view. Let's give it a height, which is equal to half the screen height. So for that, we'll say height is equal to animated header height because that takes up half the height once it's expanded. The opacity that we'll give it is animated song details opacity. We had to create this. So let's go ahead and create that. So here I'll just duplicate this. In fact, I'll just duplicate the animated song title opacity because the range is the same. Rename this to animated song details opacity. The input range will remain the same. It's just that the output range will get reversed. So it'll become one zero zero so that it shows up only when the screen is at the top. Coming down here, inside this, we'll put in another view with a style of flex equal to two, a flex direction of row, align items of center, and justify content of space around. Inside this, we'll put in our icons, which are the Previous song, next song, and the pause icon. So we'll use Ionicons. Name of the icon will be MD Divined. Size will be 40. Let's just duplicate that. This will be MD Pause and MD Fast Forward. Let's give the middle icon a slightly larger size. Once we save that, let's test it out. As we see, this nicely shows up once the screen is fully expanded. Below this, we want to just add two icons. One is the plus icon and one is the more icon. So we'll do that below this. Below this view, put in another view. With the flex direction of row again. Justify content of space between because we want the icons to be at the two far corners. And we'll just add a padding horizontal of 20 so that it's nicely spaced and also a padding bottom of 20. Inside this, the first icon would be MD add with a size of 32. And we'll just give it that pink color again. Let's duplicate that. The one on the right corner will be MD more. There we see those two icons are also showing up. What we're left with is the slider here and the name of the song with the artist. So let's do that here above this. So above this view, put in another view with a style of Flex of one, align items of center, justify content of flex end, because we want it to be at the bottom of this view that comes here. Inside this view, let's put, it, put in the first text, which will be the name of the song. So Hotel California Live. Let's duplicate this and change this to the band name, which is Eagles and the name of the album which is help freezes over. Let's just style this text a little. It's a style, font weight of bold, font size of 22. And similarly here, we'll say style is equal to font size of 18 and a color of pink. Let's see if that works. And there, that looks really nice. We need to just put the slider in here now. So with the slider, I'm just going to copy in the slider that's given in the docs. We'll put that inside another view right below this. So we'll say view with a style of height of 40, a width of screen width, and align items of center. Let's paste the slider in now. We don't need these two functions that come with it. And we'll also change the default value to the minimum value that's given by default of 18. As we move this up, we see, we can see the slider there as well. The last thing that we're left with is right now, we can't scroll this. It just goes up and down. So let's fix that and we'll fix the ranges of the scroll as well. So we just wrap this main animated header height view here inside a scroll view.
and we'll give some properties to the scroll view. So we'll say scroll enabled. For that, we'll create a state on which we'll check if the scroll is enabled or not. So we'll say this dot state dot is scroll enabled. We'll just set that. Next, we'll say scroll event throttle of the minimum that we can give, which is 16, so that every 16 milliseconds we're given a response. And we'll also put a on scroll event, which we'll map onto two values, which we just create here on the top. So here at the top, we'll add the state. We'll say is scroll enabled and by default we set it to false. Inside the component will mount, we'll say this dot scroll offset and set that to zero. Now coming down here, inside the event method, we'll say this dot scroll offset is equal to event dot native event dot content offset dot y because we're only concerned about the y axis. So what we're basically trying to achieve is, just like in the pan responder, when we pan, we set the panned value to our value here. As we see, this.animation.set value x of 0 and gesture.state.dy. Similarly, what we're going to do with the scroll view is, as the user scrolls, once this becomes bigger, we'll enable scrolling on this. So when the user scrolls, the amount that is scrolled will get set on the scroll offset. Now, depending on the scroll, if the user is right at the top, then we should allow the user to close this. If the user is not right at the top, we should allow him to continue to scroll up. That can be done in our on move should set pan responder. Right now we're passing it through because we're allowing the user to always be able to pan the screen, but we'll change that. So let's pass in the event and the gesture state. Here, instead of true, we'll pass in the function. So in this function, our aim is to check when to enable the pan responder. So depending on certain conditions, we'll do that. So the first thing we'll check is if this dot state dot is scroll enabled is set to true and and this dot scroll offset is less than zero. That should be another F. And and the user is trying to swipe down. So we'll say gesture state dot dy is greater than zero. So if these three conditions are correct, we'll return true. So we're yet to set this is scroll enabled to true anywhere. So come down here inside our animated dot spray. Here in the first condition, if gesture state dot dy is less than zero, what we were doing is we were animating it to the top. So when it animates to the top, we want to enable the scroll. So we'll say this dot set state, and we'll set is scroll enabled to true. And in our other case, when it animates back down here, there is no reason the user would want to scroll here. So we'll set scroll to false. So we'll set this dot set state is scroll enabled false. So now we know where we're setting the is scroll enabled. Here, if you just come up, we're just considering the fact that the user is trying to swipe down. And here, the scroll offset should actually be less than equal to zero. Because when the user has scrolled right till the top, the scroll offset will show zero. We need to add another condition here to make sure that the swipe is enabled at the bottom. So what we'll do is we put in an or value here. And we'll say or if not this dot state dot is scroll enabled and and the user is trying to swipe up which is gesture state dot dy is less than zero then also return true so to test this out let's just add some more data inside our scroll view so that it becomes longer so inside our scroll view we'll just put in an empty view of height equal to 1000 let's save this out now and test this so scroll is currently disabled and the user is swiping up. So this should work. Once this has become completely full, we should be able to scroll, which is happening here. When the user hits the top again, the user, user should be able to swipe down. There are two things that are left to do now. One is to animate the background color when the user is scrolling and also to handle some particular use cases. One of them is when the user swipes down and then swipes up here. And if you leave it, this goes off screen. The other one is when the user swipes up and then swipes down again and leaves it, it tends to go off screen. So let's handle this first and then we'll animate the background color. So come here in our animated dot spring methods. In our on pan responder release, what we'll do is we'll add another condition. We'll say if gesture state dot move y is greater than the screen height minus 120, which is the height of our bottom bar. That is, if the user has panned beyond this position, what we want to do is we want to say animated dot spring this dot animation dot y 
2 value will be 0 and tension will be 1 and we'll start this. So that just comes back to from where we started. Else if gesture state dot move y is less than 120 that is the user has swiped beyond the 120 threshold at the top. We'll just copy this, paste this in here and then instead of putting in an if we'll put this into an else if as well. And now if we test this out, we can see that when the user comes here at the bottom, it doesn't go beyond. And when the user comes here at the top, first pans down and then pans up, it doesn't allow it to go beyond. Now the last thing, let's just animate our background color. So here, let's just create another value. Let's duplicate this, call this animated background color. So when it's at the top, we want it to have a nice black color. So we'll say RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.5. And let's get rid of this middle range. As it reaches the bottom, we want it to become white. Let's add this animated background color. Change this to animated background color. Now, as we see, the background color animates to a black color. Coming down, it turns back to a white color. I know this has been a long series. I hope you guys have learned quite a lot from this. Please test this out and please subscribe and like. Thank you for watching.